Today I want to cover lesson 7.2 which discusses areas in the plane and how we can use integrals to help us determine what given areas are in the plane. This is really an extension. This is an extension and application of things that we have already talked about. However, this is going to become a very important idea in the next several sections as we go through and deal with volume. As you probably remember from geometry, working to solve volume problems typically involve finding areas of portions of an object and it, it turns out that a lot of what we will see as we do areas will be applicable to what we do when we talk about um, volume. So I want to start just with a refresher here. This is something that should be first nature to you now at this point. Clearly if I have some function f of x and we want to say determine the area between two endpoints. Say we have a point A and a point B here and we want to determine this area. The area can be computed simply as the integral from A to B of this particular function f of x integrated with respect to x. So this is a very straightforward object that we're very comfortable with and we understand. What I want to do today is extend this and look at some additional applications and, and additional situations where we may want to find area that are, are a little bit more complicated. To start with, I want to look at the area between two curves. And we'll look at an example here in just a moment. But in this particular case, we may be looking at having some function f of x and some new function g of x and on the interval from a to b now we're interested in finding the area uh, between these two curves. So we're interested in finding an area of some of some oddly shaped region right there. The reasoning here is oftentimes we're going to be interested in finding oddly, oddly shaped areas. Uh, the way in which we approach this problem however is to simply think about this as the area under one curve say the area under the upper curve f of x minus the area under the lower curve. So we're simply going to do a, an area subtraction problem. If we subtract out the area here under this curve, that will leave us with the, with the area here. So to, to put this in, a, um, in, a, in terms of a formula, the area between these two curves will be the integral from points A to B and we'll simply take the function f of x minus g of x. That will give us the width of the function or the width between the functions at every single point and we'll simply add up all of those all of those differences and that will give us our area between these curves. So what I would like us to do is I would like us to be able to look at an example and in this particular case I'd like us to look at the area between the curves f of x equals x and g of x is one half x squared. One of the important things to note as you're doing these kinds of problems is you need to be aware of the interval over which you should be doing the integral. Sometimes we're just going to want a section, sometimes we're going to want multiple pieces. Um, in a problem like this if I'm going to have you do the do the area between this point and, and this point, I would say find the area of the region bounded by the two curves f of x and g of x and, and that would give us that would give us this area right in here. That would be the area that we would be um, working with in this particular case. Now because f of x equals x is our upper function and g of x equals one half x squared is our lower function in this case, we're going to actually have the integral. The area here we can write out what this is going to be. The area will be the, will be, oops, the, uh, the area will equal the integral of x minus one half x squared. f of x minus g of x dx. And the important thing now will be to set the correct limits of integration. Clearly down below here we can see that our lower limit of integration is zero and our upper limit of integration is where these two curves intersect. Um, and oftentimes as part of a problem like this we'll be asked to determine where these curves intersect. So really we're looking for this point right here and at this point f of x 
is equal to g of x, which simply means that x is equal to 1 half x squared. The two places that this is solved is when x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to 2. You can verify that by moving things over and factoring or doing some other, some other technique. So we're going to integrate this from 0 to 2. So let's work out what this integral is. This will be our, this will be our area that we're asked to, to compute in this particular problem. So we're looking now at the integral from 0 to 2 of x minus 1 half x squared dx. And of course, we can break this up into two pieces. We can break this up into the integral from 0 to 2 of x dx minus 1 half the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx. You can, you can think about that as two separate problems if, if that is to your liking. The integral of x, of course, is 1 half x squared. So we will evaluate that at 0 and at 2 minus one-half the integral of x squared will be one-third x cubed, and we will evaluate that at zero and at two. Of course, at zero, both of these objects have a value of zero, so we simply have to figure out what their value is at two. If I plug in two, we get one-half of two squared minus one-sixth of two cubed. Two squared is four, half of four is two, so this is two minus eight-sixths or it's 12 6 minus 8 6 that would give us 4 6 or an area of 2 thirds so the area of that shaded region is is 2 thirds so oftentimes we'll be asked to find the area bounded by two curves and if you again recall the the process we followed here we identified the endpoints of our interval those are simply the places where these two curves intersected and we subtracted the bottom function, the lower function, from the upper function. Not every problem looks exactly like this. Often problems can be more complicated. This was one that was only defined by two curves, but we can also look at problems that involve multiple curves. Frequently one of those curves, or more than one of those curves, will be either the x or the y axis. So let me give you an example here. And with this example, I'm going to ask that you attempt to Set this, set this problem up before you, um, before you continue the, the video. So try to set up this problem as you think it should be set up, and we'll see, what we, we'll see if we agree. So I'm going to look at the function y equals cosine of x, and I'm also going to look at the function here that looks something like this. And we'll call this point x equals 2. And this is positive 2. So this is the function y equals minus x plus 2. And what I'd like us to do is I would like us to find the area of the region that starts at the y-axis and goes all the way to here. So I'd like us to find the area of this particular region and see if we can come up with what that would be. So take a moment, see if you can figure out what this integral is going to have to look like to be able to find the answer. So pause now and resume when you think you have an answer. Well, welcome back. I hope that you spent some time thinking about this problem and, and have an answer in mind. The answer, of course, you might be tempted to say, oh, it's the integral from 0 to 2. That's the x-axis interval we're looking at. And the minus x plus 2 is the upper function. And so we subtract the lower function from that. You might think that that's OK. That's not quite OK. And the reason for that is, if you think about it, there's a boundary point right here. And after this boundary point, the cosine function no longer is part of our calculation. It, the function changes now to be bounded by the x-axis. So what we really have to do is actually take and break this up into two different integrals. We have two different regions. We have the region on the left here, which is the area between the curve minus x plus 2 and cosine of x. And this goes from 0 to the place where cosine is 0, which is pi over 2. Okay. So we're going to 
cross this out as not being right and we're going to make some changes, we have two pieces to this integral. The area here is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of this function minus x plus 2 minus cosine of x dx plus we have to add in a second area. We have to add in the area to the right here. And this area is simply the area between the function minus x plus 2 and the y-axis. So if we add in another piece here, this will be the portion that goes from pi over 2 to 2 and is simply the integral of minus x plus 2 dx. So let's go ahead and, and work out what this integral is going to be. Again, we had two pieces, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 minus x plus 2 minus cosine of x dx plus the integral from pi over 2 to 2 of minus x plus 2 dx. So let's, let's work out both of these integrals and determine what, what our values will be here. The integral of minus x plus 2 is going to be minus 1 half x squared plus 2x. The integral of minus cosine of x will be minus sine of x and we will evaluate that at both 0 and pi over 2. Plus we have the integral from pi over 2 to 2 of minus x plus 2 and of course the integral of minus x plus 2 is going to be minus 1 half x squared plus 2x and again this will be evaluated at pi over 2 and at 2. So if we plug in values here to determine what the, what the actual area is, we can come up with our result. Plugging in pi over 2 into this first expression, we have minus 1 half pi over 2 squared plus 2 pi over 2 minus the sine of pi over 2 minus all of this evaluated at 0 and if you think about that, every single piece there will be 0. x squared when x is 0 is 0. 2x and sine x, all of those are 0 when x equals 0. The second integral then gives us minus 1 half of 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus, minus 1 half of pi over 2 squared plus 2 pi over 2. And so this is the expression we need to simplify here. We can start to combine together terms that are similar. Notice we have a minus 1 half pi over 2 squared and we have a positive 1 half pi over 2 squared here. Those two pieces will cancel each other out, which is nice. And otherwise everything else should, should stick around. Our 2 pi over 2 here and our 2 pi over 2 here will add together to give us 2 pi. Our minus sine of pi over 2, that's actually going to be a minus 1. 2 squared is 4 minus a half times 4 will be a minus 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So combining all these together we have 4 minus 2 minus 1, that's the same as 4 minus 3. So the correct answer here will be 2 pi plus 1. Again, as we go through and look at these kinds of problems, the tricky part is not necessarily doing the integrals or evaluating things. Rather, when we're faced with multiple curves, it's figuring out how to break an integral up into pieces that involve the correct functions over the correct intervals and add those, combine those functions together in a, um, in a particularly useful um, and meaningful way.